Hello, it's Scott Manley here. When we'd last left our astronaut Wildorf Kerman, he had crashed his lander onto the moon. It wasn't entirely his fault, it was partly due to the budget cuts which had left him with a capsule that was largely non-functional. When the spacecraft landed, it had no inbuilt torque to be able to control the motion, and so it tipped over, leaving him with a non-functional vehicle. However, he has a plan to escape, something that has been talked about in contingency plans. He just needs to try and figure out where the planet Kerbin is. So to do that, the planet Kerbin is below the horizon, but if he flies up vertically, he might be able to get a, an idea of where it is. And so here we go, in time acceleration. He's burning off some EVA fuel, but when he comes back down, he will be able to refill his tanks and uh, exploit that infinite fuel. However, the fuel on, in his EVA suit is not enough to get off the surface of the moon on its own. Uh, it turns out that the delta V required to get into orbit of the moon is just slightly below uh, or slightly above what the EVA suit offers. So he didn't see it up there, but he did see that there's some strange linear features in the terrain that looks almost like um, texture repetition. I think that might be good enough for us to uh, get an idea about which way is the correct way to fly this thing. But knowing what way to fly, well, that's not going to be enough. He, <laughs> he's going to need something else. And um, well, when he comes back, he also makes a, an interesting discovery just coming back down to land, you notice that the lander or the engine section of the lander has mysteriously acquired a decoupler, which is um, somewhat unfortunate. His plan um, was going to need that engine, but with that decoupler in the way, it will be blocking the force of the engine. It's imperative that he figure out what's going on here. So yeah, apparently when you go more than two and a half kilometers from this lander that we used, the decoupler will magically reappear. And at that point, the lander will no longer become controllable. If you remember the last video, I was able to mess around with the, the lander and control it even after it had detached. I was able to adjust the thrust and activate the landing legs and eventually get it the right way up. But um, after a bit of experimenting, it turns out that that's not possible either. And so since the game is messing around with my universe, I feel that reloading from a save is perhaps the best approach. But it turns out that even reloading from a save doesn't fix this problem, and uh, neither does crashing into the rocket. Some more extreme ideas are considered. Apparently I can still right-click on the rocket and activate bits and pieces. That doesn't help me, unfortunately, access the engine, and I can't fire off that decoupler using a right-click. So I go in, and I edit the save file, bringing in a new rocket section from another rocket that uh, does have mechanical jabs still attached and does not have that accursed decoupler. Now, I zoom back out, and again, I can see the lines in the terrain corresponding to the texture so I put myself in a perfect position, lined up with these. Get ready in my suit, activate my suit's RCS system, and then uh, switch to the rocket, fire it up, pushing its force straight into the ground, of course, trying to move the moon utterly futilely. But now I take off and uh, do my best to fly through this. And it gives me a kick straight up, at which point I start thrusting for my life. You see, as I said, normally the suit has barely enough EVA to, to get into a, a suborbital hop. You can get so close, but with the tiny kick that this thing gives me, I think I can make orbit. Perhaps not by much, but by just enough to make me uh, an orbital rendezvous target. And so... Unfortunately, I'm going to be flying this from the map screen. It would be kind of cool if uh, I was able to get a little more instrumentation or maybe do a, a stopwatch um, a stopwatch um, flight profile. But, uh, you know, there's too much variation bouncing off these things, bouncing off these rocket exhausts. So I'm just going to 
try and fly this. I'm basically holding W to accelerate horizontally and occasionally pressing the shift key to um, uh, control my vertical velocity. I don't want to go too high because um, fuel spent going up using the vertical thing takes away from my lateral velocity. I don't know, I've, I've done some tests and when you use multiple thrust vectors, it uh, you use the same absolute magnitude of your thrust vector, you just change the, the velocity. So you can't do you know, a quake thing where you can, you know, those flaws in the quake engine where if you jumped and turned at the same time, you could actually pick up, you know, ridiculous speed. There was a whole, whole lot of uh, interesting physics exploits in early first-person shooter systems, which uh, I thought might be in this one, but uh, are not, thankfully. So yeah, uh, we're now picking up 315 meters per second. We need to get up to about 550. I'm not even going to switch back and see how much fuel I have left, because really, this is it. There's no no turning back now. I have picked, must have used up more than half my fuel now. Uh, if I do not get into orbit, I will slam into the surface, or Wildorf will slam into the surface, um, because there is no one else around to rescue him, and he has certainly gone past the point of no return. So I'm just trying to keep the altitude of the, the, or the position of the Apple Moon just ahead of me so that it's continually going upwards. But again, continuing to thrust sideways. Now, you can see that I, I've actually got a pretty good line. I don't know, I'm pretty well aligned with the horizontal equator. Uh, there's another orbit that's lined up along with that. So it looks like I must be pretty close to it. That will minimize the amount of fuel that the rescue ship needs to use in rescuing me. 470, 480 meters per second. I am getting so close. I do. I hope I do not run out of fuel. This will be really embarrassing. I am now just waiting for that Perry Moon marker to appear on the other side of the celestial body and give me the give me the reward, showing me an orbit. 540, 544, 50. Come on, 55. There is that it? No, almost there. They are 560 meters per second, practically. And now I'm going to pass one kilometer over the surface. That is probably not a safe distance, but let's see how much fuel I have. 0.9% fuel. There, I knew it would be a slim margin. I didn't know it would be quite that slim. I would really like to leave a f bit of fuel in his pack so that I can um, rendezvous. Well, so that when I the other ship comes to pick him up, that... He is not um, without any fuel at all, because otherwise I'm going to basically have to fly the ship into him, which might be hard. But let's, uh, unfortunately, we're so low, time accelerating around to the other side is going to be, uh, time accelerating around to Apple Apps, Apple, will be, uh, take a little bit of time. There we go, got time acceleration back, flying over, um, well, flying over someone else who's standing in a crater. Uh, as you can see, I don't tend to delete stuff from my save file very often. So uh, we have quite a lot of stuff. There's also a, <laughs> there's also a piece of debris that is orbiting at zero around the the lunar center, and I should really fix that. So let's let's try and see how much altitude I can get. Two kilometers. That should be safe. Two point two. Two point nine. Three. I want to get it up to around five. Okay, that's it. I'm dry. There is no fuel left. 3.9 kilometers and uh, 8 kilometers on this side. That is a safe orbit. It is a stable orbit. It will not hit any feature on the moon. And Wildorf can enjoy the sights. Meanwhile, his crew up in Kerbalo, Kerbalo, well, they are thinking that they don't have enough fuel on board to come down to the lower orbit and rescue him. So... They have someone else on hand that may be able to do it from the previous better launcher. I'm Scott Manley, and we will see if we can rescue this guy in the next episode.